14 of these passports totally full 195 countries here we have Ravi Prabhu who traveled almost he traveled covered the globe so how, how is the experience how are you feeling um, uh, on cloud nine right now because I thought uh, it wasn't a feat I would be able to accomplish so having had the chance to traverse through all 195 countries some of them were very difficult to get through for example Pakistan as an Indian origin guy I've been to every nook and corner of Pakistan I've seen more Pakistan than 99% of Pakistanis so I've been to some places that you can't even expect to go through like for example Venezuela is off limits right now Syria is off limits Turkmenistan nobody gets a visa so I feel super accomplished to have completed every country on the world. Let, let me tell you, what inspired you to covering all the globe? See, everyone wants to travel and you tell me what inspired you and you accomplished it. So I was a student of political science, I have a master's, I hold a master's degree uh, in political science from Central University of Hyderabad. So having studied about the political systems, ever since I was a kid I used to participate in these quizzes and geography. I, I, my mother gifted me with an atlas. Probably that was the worst decision now. Uh, I was glued to the atlas, looking at places, gulfs, mountains, valleys, trenches, and so forth. Without me knowing subconsciously, I started some kind of uh, inquisitiveness to see the world, to explore the world, and to see what the world is. Is it exactly like it is on a book? Or is it something uh, that is beyond the contours of a book? So the curiosity, intellectual curiosity is what uh, instigated for me to travel. Okay, there are the countries which are like very dangerous, like restricted, restrictions are there, Correct. the mindset. Can you tell me some of those countries? I mean, it's always, I think, uh, rather than the countries, I think it's our mindsets that are, that are restricted. For example, I, I, um, so many people hate me for talking about Pakistan so many times, but I have to give you the example of Pakistan because an average Indian, you talk about Pakistan, they think there's only terrorists out there, they're going to kill us and so forth. But once you go there, you realize that be it Pakistan, be it Syria, be it Palestine, be it Israel, everybody is looking for food, shelter and pursuit of happiness. I don't think anybody would want to sacrifice their own life with a minimal, uh, infinite, infinite, small, small percentage of people. Everybody is looking for the goodness of their family and goodness of themselves. So this is, I think, the restrictions that we, uh, the perception that we lay in our own minds. So that's what I discovered as a traveler. Similarity have you seen between Pakistan and India? Everything is similar. I do, other than the passport and the national border, I think everything is similar because 1947, before 1947, majority of the people, many people migrated from Pakistan to India. And everywhere you go in Pakistan, you see a Delhi wala. Everywhere in India you see a Karachi wala. Karachi is in Pakistan and Delhi is in India. That itself tells you that there's a lot of cross migration. And it was all one mindset, right? If you look at Mahabharat, Gandhari comes from Afghanistan, right? Many places where the Pandavas visited, or in, pa in the current day Pakistan, Indus Valley civilization was in Pakistan, right? Uh, is in Pakistan, Mohenjadaro, so forth. And that's why I say, uh, for example, I stay in a, a kibbutz in Israel, which is a Jewish community they say bad things about Palestine. And you go to Palestine, I get the same warmth, same endearment, and they say bad things about Israel. So it's the territorial disputes, cultural disputes. But when you are not part of the dispute, I think the world is a very similar place. Uh, the disputed lands, we'll talk about something about the Syria you are talking about. Yeah. Can you tell me about the how, the Syria, and how were you were managed during the time when you were there, I heard that the conflict was going on. The conflict ended luckily in Syria, but then Syria is not one country. When you see the map, it's one country, but Syria is owned by pockets. The Kurdish army owns some, Turkish army, Russian army, they manage some, right? But if you look at a realistic map of Syria, it's, it's dotted. So when you go from one area to one area, there is some kind of an agreement between armies and militias, wherein we don't attack you, you don't attack them, but anything can be in flames in seconds. So there's always an element of risk involved everywhere you go, but you traverse through the risk and that's how you accomplish. Have you come across uh, any, the refugee camps or yeah. stayed with the camps? Yes, yes, yes. So for example, Venezuela was a very rich country. In terms of natural resources, I think it has the second largest petroleum reserves and it is still a rich country, but because of various government policies uh, and high inflation, at one point they had two million percent inflation. 
So that's why when you go to Panama, when you go to Colombia, you see Venezuelans doing all sorts of things unimaginable just to make a decent meal. So, and then when I went to uh, Kurdish territory, uh, Kurd Kurdistan, there were a lot of Syrian refugees because these were the borderlands and many people had to leave Homs and Aleppo and even Damascus. People were living in Damascus on the street side. So I've seen many camps like that. That, uh, I heard that Balochistan women are very beautiful. Can you describe something about that? I think the good, bad and ugly is everywhere. Uh, I mean, you see amazing, gorgeous people in Telugu lands and in Colombia and Venezuela. See, Venezuela won the most number of pageants. That doesn't mean everybody in Venezuela is good looking, right? So, yeah, people are good looking everywhere. It's, it's all how you look at it. Tell me some, something about the Egypt. Like, I've heard that Egypt, a lot of uh, the the monumental stuff. Awesome. Yeah, so if you, if you want to, beyond uh, imagination, if you want to look at something substantial, something physical, I think Egypt has the most oldest structure. Uh, the pyramids are at least like 2500 BC, makes it almost 5000 years, right? You hear of Mahabharata, Ramayana, but you don't see a physical, uh, I mean, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Delhi. Delhi was where Ma has. Delhi was the city. What is the name? Indraprastha is the current day Delhi. Kurukshetra is in Haryana. You see all that, but to see an actual physical structure. So it's quite amazing to see the pyramid of Giza and the other pyramids of uh, Shafrin uh, and Khufu. These pyramids are still there in Giza, 4,500 plus years. So that's an amazing. Well, let's talk about the seven wonders of the world. Yeah. So, you so people always talk about seven wonders, but in reality, there's only one wonder that remains. That's the Great Pyramids of Egypt. There were original seven wonders, six have gone. So for example, Lighthouse of Alexandria, the Statue of Zeus, there are seven. There used to be seven, only one stands. The current seven wonders are by elections. Like somebody, they had like 200 nominations and they said, please vote for a wonder. So that doesn't really make a wonder because India has a large population. Taj Mahal is one of them. China has a large population, so a Great Wall is one. So the current seven wonders that you talk about are not the real wonders. These are nominated wonders. But only one wonder stands, that's the Egypt pyramids. Let, let, let me talk about your travel expenses. How much would have cost you a travel? So since I'm not a full-time traveler, I don't hop from a place to place. I live in the US. I have to concentrate on my career and family. So I've done many trips back and forth. So, so far I must have spent something to the tune of 20 plus crores for travel. So the travel, total travel, to travel around you. So what is the time period you have taken? The first uh, travel? So the first travel by myself, by my own means was in 1997. So it's 2024. So approximately 27 years. Because I, it's not a full time travel, right? It's not like hopping from one place to another place. I had to take care of my job, career, family and balancing all the other things, the whole nine yards. So that's why it took me 27. They said you, you're married, you yes, have sir. a daughter also, yes, yes. right? Yeah. Like, how do you give them that, your time to them? That, that's why I don't travel continuously. Um, the maximum time I spend away from my family is two weeks or three weeks. So I make sure for every three weeks, I compensate at least the double, six weeks or nine weeks, triple. So everything has a time limit, right? You have only 24 hours and 365 days. So within this time span is what you can accomplish. I see, we have a lot of people who wanted to travel, like okay. the travel is their passion, but due to the lot of constraints, they were not able to travel. Yeah. Okay. For those people, any advice from your side to boost their spirit? I mean, I see, everybody, right? I mean, man is born free, but everywhere in chains is what they say. So marriage is a chain, job is a chain, money is a chain. So when you unshackle these chains and then you overcome, that's when uh, you do it. If I'm able to do it, anybody should be able to do it. So take me as an example where I balance my family, career, job, money. And in spite of balancing all this, I was able to accomplish the 195. So I, I, I call everywhere. I, I say that I'm a case study. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Like in the present uh, time, okay, the bloggers are the people who are enhancing the tourism travel okay. of the world because you will be showing people, you are asking them to come. So like that, like have any any moments, you proud moments you felt like? Yeah, yeah many, many places, right? Uh, for example, I landed in Vizag and an old couple, maybe they're in seventies, they come to me running and ask me, hey, are you Ravi? I said, yes. Oh, my son follows you. 
and when we went to Las Vegas, we were basically watching your vlogs and then following the plan. So it feels good, right? And the other day I was at a, uh, at a school and a parent comes in and says, my son wasn't interested in studies. He saw your lifestyle and he wants to be like you. So now he has gotten a good score in GMAT and is now going to the US. So you, you subconsciously inspire a lot of people. That really makes sense. Before, before we conclude this talk, any, any suggestions you want to tell those who are enthusiastic for traveling? My suggestion is uh, always make travel your passion or hobby, but don't make it your career. I've seen some people, they quit their jobs and get into travel. One year back, I get many messages saying that, hey, I had to buy a GoPro, I loaned my money, now I am not getting enough views, I can't make this payment. I, I do get a lot of examples like this, so what I mean to say uh, is always concentrate on your studies, then your career, then job, and make this a hobby and not a profession. This is uh, any travel tips, what to carry, what not to carry, how much to carry? See, these days, travel is easy. When I started, travel was very difficult. Now, nowadays, all you need is money, passport, and a phone. With a phone, meaning with internet access, everything is accessible, right? Now it's in a digital world. So travel is easy. It's not as difficult as it used to be. So what I would say is always look for a good deal. I use like Skyscanner. I use a website called Skyscanner to sort out the flights. So you can see what is more economical. Is time more important? Money more important? Would you need a direct flight? Would you take a number of stopovers and always travel within your budget. Don't extend your budget. So you can stay, uh, for example, you can stay in Hyderabad for 500 rupees a night or 50,000 rupees a night, hotels I mean, right? So always cater to your travel within your budget is my suggestion. Ravi, that's amazing, right. amazing so interacting much. with you. Okay, with uh, uh, Ravi, who has traveled almost 195 countries. This is Sanjay Samuel for Deccan Chronicle.